Today, I want to talk about Illustrate AI from design bundles covering what's new, how to use it, some additional editing tools, DAL E3, and more. To use Illustrate AI, you need a subscription. If you plan to utilize artificial intelligence, then the Plus Unlimited subscription is the one you'll want to choose. Besides that, it gives you access to actual designs made by designers who have joined the Plus program. You can also have unlimited generations with AI, including for the DALL-E engine. In the Plus library, you can see products created by Plus designers such as fonts, illustrations, a variety of designs for crafters like SVG and paper crafting, 3D designs, clip art, mock-ups, and pretty much everything you need. I'm not paid to promote design bundles, um, but I am a Plus designer there. You can find designs I've made for sale there that are part of the subscription. If you click on the Illustrate AI menu, you can find more info about it. You can also explore the gallery of AI-generated images, which you can download or remix. There are more than half a million generations at the moment of this recording. So if you like something from there, you can either download it or um, use the remix button to get the prompt and create a variation of that generation. If you go back to the Illustrate AI menu, you'll see a button for Start Creating that will take you to the area where you can generate your own ideas from text. The text prompt is a description you give the AI to guide it in generating an image for you. For example, a simple prompt could be a cute cartoon cat on a white background. If you're unsure which prompt to try first, here are some suggested prompts. I'll turn that feature off for now. Let's try again with the simple prompt and now click on Enhance. This will use AI to make the prompt more detailed and complex. As you can see, it added more words to describe how it should look. A negative prompt allows you to specify things you don't want to appear in your generation. It could be objects like flowers or a particular style. If you don't want the image to look too realistic, you can add photographic in the negative to make it look less like a photo. Art styles are really cool because they let you create images in a certain art style like photographic, pixel art, watercolor, and so on. You have a few styles to choose from. If you click on the star, it will add that style to your favorites. In the Favorites tab, you can see all your favorite art styles. You can also search for styles by typing something in the search bar. For this example, I'll use the whimsical watercolor style. So we have the prompt, the art style, and now we can choose how many images we want to generate at once. If you're on the unlimited plan, just go with four so you get four variations at once. As for the size, you can choose between square, landscape, and portrait. I prefer square most of the time. You can also upload an image if you want to get a variation of a certain image. There are advanced options like scale, steps, and seed, which usually work fine on default settings. Once you've set the prompt, style, size, and any other options, you just hit create to generate the image. You can then adjust the prompt and create another one and so on. With unlimited generation, you can play around all day to get hundreds of images. While it's generating, let me show you how you can change the view. From here, you can adjust how many columns you want so it fits better on your screen. And now we have our first four generations with the Illustrate AI engine. Click on an image to view it larger, uh, then use the arrow to navigate to the next one from those four generations. If you hover the mouse over those three dots, uh, you'll find a menu for publishing, downloading, and deleting. You also have those options if you click on the image. Let's publish an image. By publishing an image, it will be available for download and will also be published in the library so you and all other subscribers can download it. Once it's published, you have some new options beside download. One is the edit button, which we'll talk about later, and the other is the possibility to add it to a collection. Let me show you how you can add it to a collection. I usually open an image to see it larger to make sure it looks good. Then I use the add to collection button. I have saved a lot of collections, so I can choose one from here, like the animal illustrations collection, which could be fitting. If you select that and click save, it will save it in that collection. If you don't have a collection saved, you just click on create new collection. Then you give it a name, press the create button, and then choose that collection. 
To view your collection, go to My Collection. Here, you can add more collections or remove them. Click on one to go inside and see all the images and so on. Instead of publishing, you can also click directly on Download. This will inform you that it will first publish it to the gallery, then it will be available for download. Click on the Got It button and it will publish, and then you can download it as a PNG on your computer. You can also download it as 2K, which will upscale your image by two times, and then the download option will appear. Now, let's try the second engine, which is really popular, the Dolly engine. If you click on it, some things are different from the Illustrate AI engine. First, you can only generate one image at a time instead of four. Art styles can also be different. For example, you have Vivid, which is a different one. You don't have a negative prompt, and also you cannot upload an image. If I hit create, I get something like this. Let's change the art style. I like to use vivid when I want more flexibility on art styles. I'll type the letter V to filter them and select vivid. For the prompt, I'll add a cute cartoon bunny with glasses on a white background cartoon illustration. Then I'll hit the create button and in like 15, 20 seconds, you get a cool illustration. I'll quickly publish it to have it for later and let me show you what else we have here. For all the generations, you can see the prompt, more information about the style, size, date, a delete button that will delete all generations for that prompt. In this case, there is one and a maximum of four on Illustrate AI. I'll scroll down to find a generation that I liked and then I can use the remix button. When it's pressed, it will copy the prompt with styles and all the other settings for you. So you can just hit create and get another variation of that image. In this case, another cute cow. There's a new view option called gallery view that lets you order by columns. Um, when viewing on four columns, you can see a lot of your generations at once. So it's quite useful. Let's go back to generation view. You can see that each published image has an edit button. If it's not published, that edit button doesn't appear. I want to edit this cow, so I'll click on that edit button. A new area will open. This is still in beta and they are working on it, so it might still have some bugs and some tools that are not ready yet. For example, the text option is not active at the moment of recording. Click on remove background and it will open a small window that shows a brief animation of what it does. Click on remove and in about 10 seconds it will remove the background including the shadow on the ground. It depends on the image. It's not always perfect but no automatic tool is. On top you have the undo and redo buttons so you can go back to how it was. Um, here you also have a list of shortcuts. Uh, you can zoom in and out from these buttons. If you click on Scene Shift, it will automatically remove the background so it's ready to be placed on a scene. Here, you can put a color behind. For example, you can choose a green color or a purple-pink one. You also have some photo-looking backgrounds you can try out. When you're ready, hit the Replace Background button. Then you can save and download that version. I will discard the changes to go back to how it was. Another option is Magic Extend that has Zoom and Pan. If I click on zoom in, you can see in the animation what it does. When you hit create, it will apply that option. As you can see now, we have a zoomed in version. I will undo and go back to try another one. Let's try the zoom out option and hit create. What I think it does is that it looks at the edges and tries to generate something new in the missing area. So with a white background, it doesn't always work how it should. But the good part is that you can undo and try again a few times until you get the one that you like. The pan option lets you expand in a certain direction, like left, right, down, and up. Let's try the up version to see what we can get. This time, it got it quite right. Let's undo that and try the left one. And here, things got a little bit more complicated. Probably if there was a forest behind it, it could see better and expand the trees in that area. But since it was white and with some shadows from the cow on the left, it didn't quite figure out what to put. Let's undo and try the next option, the mask. Here you have uh, some nice masks. Um, the first ones are quite useful if you have an illustration with 
uh, a background and it will add like a transparent brush edge effect. You have some uh, tumblers, masks, and shapes. You can use the mouse wheel to make the shapes smaller. I will select the heart and click create to see the result. After the mask is applied, you get the cow inside that heart with a transparent background. I will undo and let me show you the latest option that was just added, uh, the sticker maker. Click on it and from the slider, you can select the stroke weight and then the color. I will go with a white color stroke and six point stroke weight and hit create. And the sticker is ready. You can click on save and download, give it a title, choose PNG to keep the transparency, then hit save button and you will get a message that it was saved in projects. Now you can use the download button to download it to your computer and you can exit by using one of the top buttons or you can click on the back button from here and you will go back to illustrate AI. You can do the same for other generations like on this bunny if you want. Let's go back and I'll show you what else is there. If we go to my projects here you can see the project with the sticker I just saved. You can go back and edit more, download, or delete the project. My collection is where your saved collections are stored. My portfolio is where you can find all the images generated by you. An AI library is where you can find all the images generated by all subscribers. You can search in this library and sort it by newest to see what people are generating right now. You can go back to Illustrate AI from this big orange button. If we click on My Portfolio, you can see all the images you have generated. I will sort it by new to see the cow I just generated. Also, here you have an extra tab for all the collections you saved. I kind of prefer this collection because it has more space and I can see more collections at once, making it easier to work with. Let's go back to the Creation tab. Um, you also have a Share button if you want to uh, share your profile with other people. Anyone can see it, but only subscribers can download the images. If you go to a collection, you also have the option to share an individual collection. If you go to the three dots and click on share, you will get a link that is copied to your clipboard that you can paste or send to other people. If you are a designer, you also have a button that will go to your store. So if you see some generation you like, you can also visit the designer store using that button. Let's go back to Illustrate AI and explore the AI library. If you want to watch more video tutorials about Illustrate AI, you can click on this button. If you like a design from the library, you can click on it. You can go to the profile of the person who generated it. Uh, maybe they have more interesting ones. Um, you can download the image, click on Show Collection, and add it to one of your existing collections or create a new one. Uh, additionally, you have the Remix button here, so you can remix generations created by other subscribers. You can hit create to create a variation of that design. Uh, you can hit create again to create another one and so on. Let's switch to Illustrate AI to have access to the image to image function. Where it says start image, you can upload an image and anything you generate based on that image will not be published, but you can still download it. I will upload this ballerina cow. For the image count, I will choose four. And for the art style, I want digital art, so I will search for that one and select it. I will go to the prompt and I will describe what I want to generate. And in this case, I want a variation of that cow, so I will use a prompt like a 2D digital painting of a cute cartoon cow with a pink ballerina suit on a white background. Now, what is important here is the image strength. I will test with the default value first, and then I will adjust accordingly. As you can see, at 50%, the variation is too subtle, with only a slight difference in the hair and the ballerina suit, but it depends also on the image you use. So I will reduce the image strength to 40% and try again. This time I have more variation. Some have a bow in the hair or on the dress, and some have different mouths. Let's reduce the image strength even more to maybe 30% and see what we get. The variation is now even more visible with changes in the eyes, mouth, arms, and dress. But you can do more. You can change the cow into a cat in the prompt if you want. So let's test it to see if it's strong enough to get a cat or if we have to reduce the image strength even more. Um, look at that. We now have a ballerina cat. And as I told you before, if we use the image 
as input. You cannot publish it into the Illustrate AI library, but you can download it to your computer. Let's change the image strength to 15 to get even more variation. Another thing you can do is to change the colors in the prompt. Since the image strength is not so high, we are able to change the pink into an orange if we want by changing the prompt. Um, and now we have a cat ballerina in orange. I want to create a YouTube thumbnail for this video, so I will use a complex prompt of a bunny in the forest. I will switch to the Dolly engine since it's good at illustrations. I will change the art style to vivid, and for size I will use landscape and hit the create button. And the result is something like this, quite cute. I will publish it so I can get the edit button. Um, after it's published, I will click on edit. On the thumbnail I am making, I have some text on the left, so I need more space on the left. Um, I will use the pan and left option to get more of the forest in that part. And this is the result, not too bad. I will go to save and give it a name, then download it to my computer, then I can upload it in Photoshop and place it so it fits as a thumbnail. If you have questions, you can find me in the Pixaroma um, community group on Facebook, and you can post your questions there. I also post all kinds of prompts for Illustrate AI. For example, I can copy the prompt for this melting bear illustration. And if I paste it in Illustrate AI with the DAL-E engine, I can get a variation of that image. Besides that, I also post daily AI challenges, and you can find out when I have new tutorials. That's all for today. Leave a like if you found this video helpful. Thank you for watching, and have a great day.